I used to move around a lot until my dad got remarried and we moved to the Midwest. The house I ended up spending the rest of my adolescence and teen years in was built two houses down from our small town cemetery. We were the first ones to ever own the land and build on it, so we were also the first people to live in our house. But that hasn't stopped weird things from happening. When I was 11, I had moved into the new bedroom in the basement and got one of those loft beds with a desk under the top bunk. One night, I woke up in the middle of the night to my TV going in and out of signal and then went back to sleep after I turned it off. When I laid back down, I felt something caress my hair for a solid 30 seconds. It wasn't threatening, but I just froze until it stopped and forced myself to sleep. We have always had a dog in the house, and they've never acted weird. But when I was 14, my mum and I were cleaning a room in our basement to get ready for a slumber party I was having, and we both heard what sounded like my dog coming down the stairs and stopping at the landing. So I went to greet him because he was getting older and stairs were a little more difficult for him. Well, he wasn't there. So I called his name and he was sitting in my parents' room with my dad. I know my mom heard the footsteps too, but to this day, she denies it happened. Nothing happened again until I was about 16 and I was having friends sleep over. The four of us are pretty musical, so we had our guitars and ukuleles propped up against the wall or laying on the floor. The four of us all woke up around the same time at like 4am and heard the strings being plucked and strummed very gently. Today, I haven't heard or seen anything else of the ordinary. None of these little instances were ever threatening or scary, just peculiar. I would usually brush them off the next day, but my friends always believed it was a ghost or something. I'm a huge believer in the paranormal, but I've never really had any experiences that were undeniably spooky, so I never gave these events much thought. But now, I think maybe they're spirits passing through, because they were so near and far between, but also because I live next to a cemetery. First, my mum is a diagnosed PTSD sufferer, and she has anxiety. So she has a hard time dealing with bad and sad things. She also tends to emotionally shut down when things get tough. She is in therapy and has been for nearly a decade. She had a really traumatic childhood. My grandmother, my mum's mother-in-law, died in 2019. My mum loved my grandma like her own mum. Her death was rather sudden. Dying of heart failure that she didn't bother really telling anyone in the family about. My mom also lost another mother figure to her around the same time. And my mom was also about 16 weeks pregnant at the time. She had me young and is only in her mid 40s now. The combination of the loss of my grandma, the other mother figure that was lost caused my mom to miscarry. She ended up needing a DNC to get the fetus out as it wasn't expelling naturally and was going into decomposition. The combination of all three losses had my mom spiraling. She was closing off to my dad, to myself, my sisters. We were all so worried about her. She was like this for a few months until she started to come back. Turns out she had a dream. In it, she saw my grandma and my great-grandma, who passed away in 2006, sitting at my grandma's old dining table and drinking coffee, a sight that was common to my mom in the early days of my parents' relationship. My mom starts trying to walk to them, but for whatever reason, isn't getting any closer, and calling out to them doesn't do anything either. After a few moments of this, they both look over at my mom, and my grandma says, it's okay, we've got her before looking down into her arms, where a small bundle is held. Mom woke up right after. She needed a good cry, but it was right after that she was able to stop processing her grief of the deaths. Mom never found out what the baby she lost was, but named it Caitlin after the dream she had of my grandma. We all still miss my grandma so much, and her loss never gets any easier. 
I'm tearing up writing this. But every now and then, we know she visits. My mom, dad, 13-year-old sister and myself have all smelled her perfume when at home. My parents have heard her voice. My cousin Aidan even once saw her at a place he, his dad and my grandma used to meet up at all the time. My in-laws house, and specifically their basement, has always given me the creeps. I don't like going into their basement by myself as I feel watched, and it's only in their basement. I was there on Sunday, by myself as my in-laws were out of town. I was doing laundry in their basement, and it was during the day, so it assuaged some of my fears. I had been doing laundry for a few hours, and out of the corner of my eye, I see a figure in the reflection of the TV. Obviously, I look up and see nothing. I tried to recreate what I saw as there are a lot of collectibles in the basement, but I couldn't. Then, around an hour later, I hear what sounds like someone upstairs. Keep in mind that I'm alone here. Even the cat isn't home at the moment. I go up, thinking it's just my sister-in-law, and nothing. An hour or so later, I hear someone coming down the stairs, and again, I go. No one is there. After that, the cat comes back in, so I can ignore some of the noises as he is a chunk, so I explain it to him. Around an hour before I leave, I hear a very audible floor creak from my in-law's bedroom. The cat is asleep in the mother-in-law's office, and again, I'm by myself. I never heard any creak speak that loud while I was there. The last time I was at my in-law's for laundry while they were gone, I saw a figure in the reflection of the TV. And I saw a figure that looked like a girl wearing one of those floor-length nightgowns, standing right next to me in the laundry room. Each time I see something though, I could never see a face. And the time I saw it in the laundry room was the only time I got a pretty clear image of what was there. Now, some of the activity I can put down to the old dogs. My in-laws have two dogs, Max and Charlie, who died in the house. One was put to sleep and the other died suddenly of a stroke. I'm a firm believer that pets can stick around after their death, as two past pets of mine have done just that. But the figures I've seen have been human in shape. There's no way around that fact. I lived in this apartment building at the edge of my city, from the time I was two to four. We had odd things happen in that place, I had weird dreams. My mom said that one day she heard me talking by the front door. She came and thought I was playing. Turns out I was looking at a corner of the wall and just carrying on as if I was having a normal conversation with a regular person. My mom was terrified as she had the right to be and asked, who are you talking to? And without missing a beat, I pointed at the corner I was looking at and said, that man over there, Bobby, can't you see him? Obviously, my mother couldn't see him. Another time, my mom was in the living room and she heard this loud crash from the kitchen. She went in, worried that I had hurt myself, but instead, she sees a loaf of bread on the floor and a broken lid. The lid was for one of those old school Pyrex pots set from the 90s. Now, Pyrex is known for being really durable, and that particular lid had tumbled a few times. This shouldn't have broken it. It wasn't until recently when we were talking about this particular apartment to a family friend that we found out a couple years before I'd been born there had been a murder in my building. Freaked the fuck out of my mom when she found that out. When I was five, my parents and I lived in this apartment building. My family had been having many things happen. Seeing figures, noises with no explanation, our cat running around like she was being chased. We even have photo anomalies, parts of photos being really shadowed. This is one of the times the spirit focused on me. I was terrified of the dark, to the point where I had a nightlight. The bathroom light was on and shining light into my room. 
as well as street light coming in through the open blinds in my room from the main street we lived nearby. My room was so well lit, I could essentially read with no issue with my light off. This night in particular, I couldn't sleep. I'm laying in bed waiting to fall asleep. My parents were already in bed sleeping. When suddenly, my room goes pitch black. I'm talking so black that I wouldn't be able to see my hand right in front of my face. I look towards where my door should be and I see this large figure in the doorway with blood red eyes. Being the little five year old I was at the time, I screamed as I saw him begin to walk towards me, which wakes my parents. They don't get up and ask me why I'm screaming. When I can't get a coherent response out, they tell me to go to their room to talk to them. They didn't know what was going on. By this point, the entity is halfway from my door to my bed. I get the courage and run. I ran right through it. And as I hit where the entity is, it gets ice cold. I didn't stop though, till I got to my door. I turned around at that point and my room was back to normal. I then go tell my parents what happened. They felt horrible that they didn't come to me after I told them what happened. Over the years, people have tried to claim it was a dream. I know it wasn't though. My main reason for knowing is because when I was a teen, I stayed at a cousin's place and I told her that story. She told me that she saw the very same entity between her and her son's crib one night. She lived a block away from my old apartment at the time. I moved to France over 20 years ago. My husband and I bought an old Maison Bourgeois, which was built in 1789. I've always been curious about the paranormal and have had some strange things occur in my life, but nothing prepared me for living in this house. The house needed a lot of work, but in the beginning, we just did some basic remodeling and updating. Shortly after we moved in, my daughter was born. We had invited quite a few out of town guests for her christening. My best friend was sleeping in a room we were using as a guest room. She's pretty pragmatic and not really a believer in the supernatural. She was awoken by a sharp punch to her stomach. She said it was so forceful that she was actually lifted off the bed. My husband laughed and said that it must have been a nightmare, but this made me feel very uneasy. Already, I had experienced weird sensations and heard footsteps in the hallway. I had kept these feelings to myself. I decided to share my thoughts with my best friend. She was very unsettled by the whole episode and was reluctant to spend another night in the room. The next night, she was again hit in the stomach, although not as violently. At this point, we were both pretty freaked out about it. She left the next day to return home. Needless to say, she now definitely believes in the paranormal. This episode was just the beginning of the strange occurrences that happened periodically throughout my time living in this house. It was a large house, over 800 square meters with a hectare of land. It has three stories. It has front and back staircases, and when you're in the front part of the house, you cannot hear anything that is going on in the back part of the house. My husband travelled a lot for work, and I was often left alone with my three young children. Since this was the case, we put in an alarm that had motion detectors in several rooms that might be vulnerable to a break-in. One such room was the playroom. We used it as a guest bedroom, but it had two doors and you had to go through this room to get to the playroom. The alarm in the playroom seemed to go off quite a lot during the dead of the night, around 2 to 3 a.m. This in of itself was enough to scare me when I was alone. I would go begrudgingly into the playroom to see what set off the alarm, only to find nothing. Sometimes one of the remote control cars would have moved, but basically nothing. We had the alarm company check it out, but they found nothing and said maybe a spider or an insect crawled in front of the motion detector. Overall, I had some pretty bad vibes in the room. One day, my son had a friend over. They were around six or seven. 
and they came to me running and acting a bit hysterical. They said they heard men talking in the room. I went there to check it out and I heard men talking but very muffled. I looked out the window into our garden to see if perhaps it was the gardener but no one was there. I couldn't find the source of the voices. They always seemed to be right next door no matter what room in that wing of the house I was in. I didn't want to show my son and his friend that I was scared so we left the room and I brought them to the kitchen. Of course later when I told the story to my husband he said I had an overactive imagination and I was influencing my son into thinking ghosts were in our house. Once I heard a man and a woman talking when I was in this room. It was late at night and I was tidying up after my children. My husband was on a trip and I started to be frightened. I thought someone had broken in but I also had a strange feeling that maybe it was something else. I called a good friend who came over with a baseball bat. She didn't hear anything and all of the doors and windows were closed and locked. I was starting to feel like maybe my husband was right and I had an overactive imagination. This, however, was not the end of the voices. And later, several other people, many of them skeptics, also heard them. There is certainly part of the house to see more activity than others. The activity is not limited to the house. The front yard of the house is quite large, with a circular driveway made of gravel. The whole property is enclosed by tall stone walls with a large gate, so it's not very easy to enter unless you go through the gate which is always closed, unless opened by an electronic opener. One day, when my oldest son was about 10 or so, we were playing around in the yard. He was running the circular driveway and I was timing him. Then I would run it and he would time me. About halfway through running a circuit, he came barreling towards me saying, Mommy, why did you do that? You scared me. I had no idea what he was talking about. I said, do what? I've been here the whole time. He said, someone was running right behind me and breathing down my neck. I felt like they were going to push me. The gravel was even crunching behind me. I immediately felt uneasy. I tried to reassure him, but I too had felt as if someone was walking behind me on the driveway on several occasions, only to turn around and find no one there. My daughter also had an experience walking from the front gate to the house one night. She said someone or something had pulled the scarf from her neck and threw it to the ground. She ran into the house hysterically, thinking someone had followed her inside the gate. We turned on the light to the yard and my husband went to check it out, but nothing. My husband said it must have been a branch from a tree or bush, but honestly, I think it was something else. What? I don't know. It left me feeling very uneasy, but I didn't like to be out front by myself. Living in a house that's haunted is not at all like you see in the movies. Months would go by and there would be nothing else of the ordinary. There were times that I would even start to believe that perhaps I had an overactive imagination. However, when other people share the same type of experience, it's hard to discount what you were experiencing. When we first moved into the house, we needed to do some basic updating. The electricity was very outdated. The electricians were up in the attic which, to be honest, was not some place I really want to visit. Doing some rewiring. Some wallpaper was peeling off a wall they were working on, and I decided to take it off. Underneath was a drawing in black charcoal of a very tall figure in a stovetop hat. Creepiest thing I ever saw. Definitely not a child's drawing. It made a real impression on me, but I put it out of my mind. Years later, we were preparing to go on vacation. The car was loaded up and my husband asked my oldest son to go back inside the house to make sure all the lights were turned off etc. After about five minutes he came racing out the front door, terrified. There's a man in your room. My husband and I went inside and searched the house. No one was there. My son later told us he reached the landing in front of our bedroom. He saw movement in the room. 
He looked inside and saw a tall man dressed in black with a hat looking out of the window. The man then started to approach him with his arm out. He ran out of there as fast as he could. This experience so affected him that he would not sleep by himself during our vacation. He was about 11 at the time. We talked about it quite a bit during the vacation. My youngest son, who was four, said, Mommy, a man comes to see me at night. He sits in the chair by my bed. I tried to talk about this with my husband because it seriously freaked me out. But he chalked it up to overactive imaginations. I never saw the man. But on numerous occasions whilst I was sleeping, I would wake up feeling panicked and have the sensation that someone was standing over me. I would bore out under the covers and pretend to still be sleeping. It made me feel like a child who's afraid to look under her bed or needs a nightlight. Who was this man that both of my sons claimed to see? Was he the man in the charcoal drawing on the attic wall? They always seem to be in the next room, but when I go to that room, they seem to be in another room. It sounds like a muffled conversation. We remodeled our house and after work, I started to hear a woman humming. Always a cheerful tune, but not one that I knew. At times, I really felt as if I was going crazy, but a friend of mine heard it as well. We were having coffee in my kitchen when I went to the restroom. My friend heard the humming and thought it was me. She started having a conversation with me, expecting me to just be outside on the kitchen door. Obviously, I did not answer, as I was not there. When I came back, she told me about what had happened. I never told her about the humming lady. We both felt this was really strange, but oddly enough, we were not frightened. It just seemed that whatever was humming was not malevolent. This is probably the scariest experience I've had. Before we remodeled the house, we had a door in the kitchen that led to our yard. Our yard was full of very tall trees and was quite large. At night time, it was very dark from all the trees and in the winter months, darkness fell quickly. Several times while in the kitchen alone at night, I would see what seemed to be quick movement by the door to the garden. Sometimes the dogs were outside and I thought maybe it was them. But at other times, there really was no explanation. Once I saw what appeared to be a very pale gold face looking in, no body was attached, just a face. But it was so fleeting, I could convince myself it was my imagination. One night, my babysitter was in the kitchen with me, helping to fix dinner. My two youngest were also in the kitchen. It was winter, so outside was pitch black. My daughter yelled, Mommy, the man just stuck his head around the door. My baby sister quickly opened the door to look out, and there was no one there. A few minutes later, my son said, there he is. We quickly looked, and we all saw a face looking in. I ran to the door, and my baby sister went outside with me. There was no one there. I turned on the outside lights, and we couldn't see anyone outside. We were all a bit freaked out. The dogs started to bark, but I was too scared to put them outside. I didn't want anything to happen to them. I quickly checked the doors to make sure they were locked. What was it? I have no idea. A ghost? Or an intruder? If it was an intruder, I'm not sure how they would have gotten in our yard, as it was enclosed by very tall stone walls. Whatever it was disappeared without a trace. I never saw another face in the window after that. In my town, we have a library that's almost as old as the town itself. When I was about 12, I was assigned a history paper in school. Since we got to pick the topic, I decided that I wanted to do it on the history of the town itself. I went to the library to get some research material. The library is actually a large two-story house previously owned by one of the town's original prominent families. The second floor was off limits unless you received permission from the staff to go up there. 
because they store most of their historic documents in books up there. I was given permission to go upstairs to look through those books. I had no preconceived notions about the library, but I felt really creeped out upstairs, alone for some reason. I was going through the books trying to find something interesting, when from one of the side rooms I heard a loud bang, like a door being slammed. Which was odd, since they had removed all the doors. I feel really uneasy about being upstairs, now that I'm there for a reason, so I decided to see what it was. Maybe a bookcase shelf gave out. I take a look in the side room, and there's only an old school writing desk with a little plaque that says Mr. Putnam, 1885. The room's a bit cold, but nothing is out of place. A little confused, I shrug it off and go back to the centre room to keep digging through books. I finally find a book that covers what I'm looking for, and sit down to start reading. I get a few pages into the book, and nearly have a heart attack when I hear another loud bang from another of the side rooms. This time it sounded like someone threw a brick at the wall. I can see into part of the room, and it looks like it was a nursery or playroom based on the tiny rocking chair and teddy bear next to it. For some reason, I was terrified of going into that room. I did anyway though, because I'm a dumbass. I walked into the room and turned to look in the corner. I wasn't able to see from outside. I froze in utter terror as I meet the eyes of a young woman in a white dress, hanging from the ceiling by her neck. She seemed to see me, but was motionless. I tried to yell, but just couldn't get it out. I was, however, able to break free of her horrific gaze and run downstairs and out of the library. I sprinted the six blocks home. It wasn't until I told people about it that I found out one of the maids that worked in the house had become pregnant out of wedlock and hung herself in that room. I still hate going near that library. One evening, when I was about 15, I was home alone for the night. I lived in an older two-story home. I often felt uncomfortable by myself in the house at night, especially in my room since I had the door to our creepy attic. I spent the evening watching TV downstairs, adequately distracted from being by myself. At some point, I decided I was ready for bed and went upstairs to my room. I shared a room and bunk bed with my older brother but he usually got home late and went to bed after me. Our bed was pushed in the corner of the room against the wall. The bottom bunk was mine. I was pretty tired, so I laid down and fell asleep almost immediately. Shortly after that, I woke up to my brother sticking his arm through the gap between the side of the bed and the wall, slapping the wall. It's dark, but I could clearly make out his arm smacking against the wall. Annoyed, I tell him to stop and roll over to try and sleep. Of course, he keeps slapping the wall, but harder now. I'm getting angry at this point, so I tell him if he doesn't stop, I'm going to hit him. No surprise, but he starts slapping even harder. I'm done with his shenanigans, and roll over to punch him in the arm, but instead, just hit the wall. A little freaked out that he pulled his arm away so quickly, I got out of bed and ripped his cover off to reveal no one there. I'm officially in nope the heck out of their mode and scurry downstairs to spend the rest of my night scared and alone. So I used to have intense poltergeist experiences. Things in front of me would literally be thrown across the room and once I was on the edge of sleep when something grabbed my foot. I felt it and yanked me to the very bottom of my bed. The latest to that string of events was when about five months ago, before quarantine, I heard something while I was home alone running through the halls. Keep in mind, both of my dogs were with me and I have no cats. After that, things just stopped until about a month ago, when my mom and her friends over, they were all outside talking from which I can see from my window. And all of a sudden, I hear a loud, constant banging on my door as if, if I didn't open it, it would bust open. So I swing it open mid-bang, expecting my little sister. But absolutely nothing, no one is there. 
No one is in the hall. I'm on the second story. So if someone would have ran down the stairs, I would have heard them. After that, things died down to the occasional bangs and things falling over without any obvious solution until last night. When I say last night was one of the most terrifying nights of my life, I mean it. It started when I went to visit my sister, who just moved into an old 83-year-old house. Then as soon as I walked in, I knew something was wrong. When I was alone, I did a little investigation, just asking if there was a spirit, give me a sign. Nothing happened until that following night. On our way home, I spotted some lights in the air, about 25,000 feet up. As we got closer, I realised they weren't moving now. If you may not know, helicopters and blimps could not go that high. And planes can't stay in one place. So that ruled out any of those, so I just labelled it a UFO. As in the actual term. That was around 8.40pm. So then we got home around 9.30. As soon as we walked in again, I could feel something was off. My dogs didn't run up to me like usual, and they weren't as hyper. Turns out one of them had done a number two in our game room, so I had to go clean it up, and our trash can is nowhere to be found. I look at the game upstairs, downstairs, in the kitchen, literally nowhere. Then all of a sudden, it appears in the middle of the game room. It's just a little event of last night. So I thought it was strange, but I just went along with my night. At around 9.50 is when I was heading to bed. As soon as I walked into my room, the ladder fell, hit my ceiling fan, breaking off the blade to which I have a picture of, and almost ripping out the fan. I quickly turn off the fan and then break the ladder down. At this point, I have no clue what's going on. I'm picking up pieces of the fan, but I hear another loud crash behind. I look behind me to see what it was, and literally nothing had fell. As I'm looking, I hear another crash behind me from where I was looking before. Again, I look, and nothing fell. This continues all night. I finish picking up the pieces and get ready for bed. At this point, it's around 10.30. I climb in bed, lay on my side as I always do, and clear as day, I hear something or someone running behind me off the other side of the bed. I jump up ready to hit someone, but no one is there. Like a little kid, I check my closet and under my bed. No one. Also, I'm a small paranormal investigator, and turns out that the most activity I've got wasn't even in an investigation. It was in my own house. I try to lay on my side again, but every time I hear something running on the other side. So I lay flat on my back. I'm trying to recall everything, but it was so scary that it's a little hard to recall. So around midnight... I decided to lay on my back and not turn over no matter what. I do it for a solid 10 minutes, hear the constant running. Then as clear as day, I see a little kid run from the bottom of my bed that I could see to my wall and vanish. I'm completely freaked out now, so I turn my lights on and just sit there. I've just moved into this room last month and everyone who was in it before had always felt a sensation of being watched. So did I. I sat there till around 1.30am, then finally just passed out and go to sleep. And then I woke up strange noises at 3 to 3.30am. I have absolutely no idea what they were. They sounded like gurgling or growling of sort. Even when I was fully awake, I still heard it. That's when I heard a bang on my closet door. So I fling it open and no one is there. I don't recall what happened after this, but I remember staying up to sounds and weird things till around 4.30, then finally going to sleep and staying asleep. But that was one of my scariest nights ever. So when I was a kid, I had the prettiest cat ever. Her name was Ansa. We got her in 2004 when I was five years old. She was the best girl and we were literally inseparable. She always came to sleep next to me and whenever I was, she would sit on my lap or near me. If she was outside hunting, she would come running whenever I called her. And if I was sad or sick, 
she would lick me and come lay next to me. She started purring every time I even looked at her, and she purred loudly. Like she was the ultimate purr machine. We lost her when I was in the army, so I didn't have a chance to say goodbye. It broke me when I got the message from my mom where she told me my cat had died when she was sleeping. But then again, she was old, so I had been expecting it. We still had two cats, but still, nothing could replace her. And as much as I loved the other cats, she was special. After that, whenever I'm visiting my parents' place and I feel sad or anxious about something, I start hearing this quiet, soft purring underneath my bed, and it sounds like her purring. The first time I heard it, I thought that's there's one of our other cats under my bed. But when I looked, I saw nothing. But I could still hear the purring. It's been almost two years now since she died, and last time I heard the purring was last Saturday. My room's door was closed, so I knew there were no other cats in my room. I needed some alone time, because my family can be a bit exhausting at times, and I was just laying on my bed feeling a bit down, and I started hearing it again. The soft purring under my bed. Nowadays I don't even bother checking it, because I know I can't see a cat there. I just accept it, and it does calm me down and makes me feel better. So whatever the purring is, it helps me. I just like to think that it's my pretty girl still wanting to make me feel better, like she did when she was still with us. My boyfriend can sometimes see dead people. I can't. He said that his first encounter was with his stillborn big brother when he was about five years old. He met him in a school toilet and they talked a little and then he disappeared and he didn't see him again. Until recently. Now, my boyfriend's apartment's hallway and toilet had always freaked me out. I always felt like there's something there watching me. The first time I had that feeling I was in the shower and I could have sworn there was someone on the other side of the curtain. I was literally shaking because I was so afraid. But when I slid the curtain to the side, there was nothing there. Once when I was watching the TV, I saw a reflection from the window. It was a dark figure moving away from the bed. To the hallway. My boyfriend was cooking in the kitchen, so there was no way it could have been him. I didn't tell him about it because I didn't want to freak him out. And I was doubting my eyes. I've also seen shadows in the hallway mirror. But again, I was doubting my eyes. My boyfriend has insomnia. And one night he was on the couch playing mobile games while I was sleeping on the bed. I often have nightmares. And according to him, I was acting restless again. He turned to see if I was okay. And he saw a dark figure standing at the end of the bed. It left immediately when my boyfriend saw it and disappeared in the hallway again. My boyfriend sat the rest of the night at the end of the bed, protecting me from whatever it was. That morning, I told him about the dark shadow figures I had seen. Once, when we were coming back from the store, my boyfriend started to open the door with his key, but the key didn't turn. He tried many times, and when it finally turned, he had to pull hard to get the door open. Later, he said that it was like there was something pulling it back. When he finally pulled the door open, I saw the air move inside the hallway, like on a warm day outside. When we stepped in, we felt really weird, like we're not welcome there. Then one night, we were watching a movie at his place. I had a migraine, and I started to feel sick and overall super tired and grumpy. When the movie ended, I crawled to bed and my boyfriend joined me, hugging me and trying to make me feel better. It was about 1.30am when suddenly all the hairs in his body stood up and he froze. He started squeezing me even tighter, almost hurting me, and I told him to let me go. He loosened his grip and turned to me and said, Honey, I don't want to scare you, but there's someone behind the front door. I was confused because I couldn't hear anything, and we couldn't even see the door from the bed. He stood up and walked to the hallway. Suddenly, he kind of jumped backed off and stared at the corner. He stood there for a while and reached his hand forward. My migraine disappeared because I was so scared. I didn't know what was going on. I couldn't see 
whatever my boyfriend could see. I thought it was the shadow I had seen before. After a while, my boyfriend came back. He seemed calm and just said, he's gone now. I was just staring at him and then he continued, I think it was my brother. He was just smiling and looking at me. We then talked and he said he didn't feel scared at all when he saw the man. Like he felt warm and loved. The man was young, like my boyfriend's brother would be and had the family ears. I painted my boyfriend's family's coat of arms on the wall before and the man had stood right next to it. My boyfriend thought he came to warn him about something but he wasn't sure what it was about because he didn't say anything. Nevertheless, my boyfriend seemed happy about the encounter and I was happy for him but I was getting more and more scared for some reason. Then, maybe half an hour passed we were just talking about his brother and his family, but my boyfriend got goosebumps again. He looked at me and whispered, he's back. But this time, he looked a lot more worried. He jumped out of bed and ran to the hallway. He stood there for a while, and then he ran to grab a candle. While he was running, he told how he felt something freezing cold come through the front door and go through the toilet wall to the kitchen. He shut all the windows lit up the candle and blew the candle. The smoke rising from it went crazy. It spiralled all around the kitchen, but there was no wind inside. My boyfriend backed off and came to the bed and grabbed me to protect me. He told me that he thinks it's a poltergeist and his brother's fighting it. We sat there for a while, but then suddenly I felt completely calm, like a weight had been lifted. My boyfriend felt it too, and we looked at each other, he whispered, I wonder if it's over. Right after that, our dustpan that was leaning against the wall fell over. He smiled and said, I'll take that as a yes. I guess my brother would. After that, we stayed awake for a long time, talking about what had just happened. And I kept telling him to thank his brother for protecting and warning us. After that, we haven't seen or felt anything weird in his apartment. I'm 21, and until now, I've never really believed in paranormal stuff, and always tried to find a logical explanation for everything. I met my boyfriend about four months ago, and he told me he can sometimes see dead people. I thought he was joking and trying to freak me out, but he was dead serious, and I don't see why he would lie to me about stuff like that. Also, a few things that have happened have really made me doubt myself. Okay, so first off, I used to think I've never seen dead people. When I was a kid, I saw a dark figure standing in a doorway at my parents' place once, but I can't remember if it was a nightmare or not. I also saw a lot of nightmares about a small girl living in our storage room. My parents' house is well over 400 years old. I still sometimes get the feeling that someone's following me when I'm visiting my parents, but I used to think it's just anxiety. I haven't told any of this to my boyfriend when we first went to my parents. When I showed him the house, he seemed uncomfortable in some of the rooms and kept staring at what seemed, to me, like emptiness. He asked if people had died in that house and I told that probably many people had died there because it was such an old house, but I only knew of one. At that point, I didn't know what he could see dead people. He also was really uneasy when he met my grandpa and it seemed a bit odd. But I thought he was just nervous. The next night was the one when he talked about his ability to see dead people. He told an out seeing people sitting on the chairs. He also talked about seeing an old man that looked a lot like my grandpa and that's why he was uneasy with him. Because at first he wasn't sure if my grandpa was alive or dead. I showed him a picture of my great grandpa who looked exactly like my grandpa and he said that he was the man he saw. He also described seeing a fat man dressed in early 1900s clothes, wearing glasses. And I showed him a picture of the man who owned the house before my family. My boyfriend confirmed it was him. Then he told me about the presence at the doorway, the same doorway I saw the nightmare about, but he didn't know about that yet. He said he couldn't see anything, but he said it felt like he walked through something freezing cold. And when I went to get a fan from the storage room, because it was really warm in my room, 
He stayed at the door and noped off and told me that someone had grabbed and brushed his foot. Now this was the same room I used to see nightmares about too when I was a kid. It just freaks me out because he had no way of knowing about my nightmares or what the people living there used to look like. I'd like to learn more about stuff like this, but I don't want to ask him too much because he's had really bad experiences with dead people. It's a really easy way of approaching him about this. Also, these aren't the only weird things that have happened after I met him. These are just the ones that made me doubt my thoughts. I already knew about this ghost before this experience. He died in a house fire in the 80s, and when a new house was built on top of his old house, he decided to occupy it. He was friendly, never tried to harm me or scare me, just wanted to have fun at our expense. Tuesday night, my roommates are gone. Sweetness, I have the house to myself. I just finished making dinner. I was watching a movie while my laundry dried. It's done. As I'm walking back to my room, I pass the front door and notice it's unlocked. I'm about to go to bed, so I might as well lock it now to save time. Fold my laundry, now back to the movie. But my cat starts crying at the door like he wants out. When I go to let him out, I open the door and he runs out. That's weird, I thought to myself. I could have sworn I locked the deadbolt. I must be tired. It's bedtime. As I'm laying in bed, I can't help but shake this feeling. I don't know what it is, but I can't sleep. So I get up and just walk around. I walk past the front door. It's unlocked. Now, I know something is up because I definitely locked it like half an hour ago. What the fuck is going on? I lock it again and walk to the kitchen for a snack. Munching on my snack, playing on my phone, I hear a click come from the front door. It's unlocked again. Nobody outside, my roommate's cars are all gone. What the fuck, yo? I lock it and sit there, waiting. A couple of minutes go by and sure enough, the deadbolt turns unlocked on its own. So I lock it again and wait. I sat there straight eyeballing that deadbolt in silence. Just as I predicted, it starts to unlock itself. Uncle Jim, I know that's you. I know that's you. I'm tired and want to go to bed. We can play tomorrow. The lock stopped rotating and then returned to the locked position. I left, came back an hour or so later and it was still locked and was still when I woke up the next morning. Uncle Jin didn't come back the next day to play. Me and my sister were very young, and we had a full-time maid babysitting us because our parents were working. I was probably nine, and my sister was six. The house helper was 40. So I've always been into such stories of the unknown and I was a weird kid. Not surprised something like this happened. I was with my sister and the sitter. We were all lying down. I was on the bed. My sister and the lady were on the floor mattress. We were chatting and singing songs. Nothing related to ghosts. And suddenly we heard in the centre of our position a loud clap. A very distinct and clear loud clap. And we were looking at each other so we knew it wasn't any of us. It was such an intimidating sound, like a clap made by someone with stiff hands. We looked at each other as if asking about it, and none of us could understand what happened. My sister wanted to use the washroom, and that sitter insisted we shouldn't move. Anyhow, I convinced her. As we were sitting in the living room and the washroom was in another room, we had to go there. We formed a line and went in, and to our shock, the washroom was locked from inside. Now we literally got terrified over thinking about every scenario possible and more than the probability of a ghost. We thought there might be an intruder. It was in an apartment, so we called our neighbours from the flat below. They broke into the washroom and called us to be at their place for a while. The lady never came back the next day because of how scared she was. That building was, in fact, creepy on its own. We were the only two families staying there, and the topmost floor was occupied by some college students. That house had a few weird incidences throughout our stay. 
I told my mum about it, and fortunately, she believed us. She felt strange in the house too. We were staying there for four or five years already. In the beginning, all the people left, and we too were the only family staying there. We left that place too, because we were fairly unsafe by the passing time. Though a few years later, my dad changed that apartment into his office space, and he never felt anything there. But my sister and I still remember that it did happen. We got goosebumps talking about it once, so we avoided touching it. When I was a baby, my mum and dad attended a funeral for her best friend's dad, who had committed suicide. Her dad was a security guard who worked second shift. Every night, he would come home, eat his dinner, and have a glass of whiskey at his seat at the table. One night he came home, ate his dinner, drank his whiskey, then shot himself. After the burial, a small group of people went back to the house for lunch and drinks. My mom and dad were one of the first people to leave because I was still a baby. My mom told Jean, name changed, that she would call her the next day to check on her. The next day, my mom calls Jean and she tells my mom to come over because she wouldn't believe what she had to tell her over the phone. Mum, go to Jean's house and get told what happened. Around 10 o'clock the night of the burial, Jean and her family decided it was time for bed. Jean had two sisters and a brother, all of whom lived out of state, and she lived at home with their parents. They cleaned up the house from the guests they had over, including washing and drying the dishes. They all went upstairs to go to bed. Sometime in the middle of the night, one of the sisters got up to use the bathroom and heard a noise coming from the kitchen. Then, what sounded like footsteps going into the dining room. Didn't think anything of it, until she saw everyone was in bed. So she woke up the brother, who then woke everyone else up. He grabbed a baseball bat and led his mom and three sisters downstairs, to see what was going on. They go into the kitchen and see one of the cabinets open. He could have sworn it was shut when they went to bed, since he put the dishes away. But he went into the dining room where he lost it. He turned on the lights and saw that the chair their dad used to sit in was pulled out, like someone had been sitting there on the tablecloth was what looked like a ring of condensation from a glass. They all freaked out and ran upstairs. A few days went by and Jean went to the store to pick up some pictures from a roll of film she had dropped off the day after the funeral. As she looked through them, her face turned white. She showed her mum a picture that was taken with everyone around the dining room table and in the middle of the picture, where her dad's chair was seated, was a faded figure of her dad. This is all from personal experience. My parents divorced when I was very young. And I chose to stay with my mother and my sisters. So I looked up to my grandfather as a male role model ever since. Sadly, he passed away when I was six or so, so I didn't really have a chance to talk about the true things of life with him. However, he made sure to teach me valuable lessons through his stories. As far as I know, he was horned by a bull. A train rammed his truck, which left him with more than a hundred stitches all over his body. He fell to the sea on a fishing trip, got lost and was presumed dead before washing ashore two days later. Was a member of the National Secret Service which I could verify myself through an ID my grandma kept under lock and key. But you know teenagers. This is not in the US, by the way. He survived two types of cancer. The third, he didn't, however. And many other accidents accounted for in pictures, newspaper articles, and the tales of my grandmother and her children, my mom included, that you'd have a hard time believing. But I digress. The day he passed away, I remember coming home from school to find my mother crying at my grandmother's place for dinner. We live two blocks away. He tells me grandpa has left the building and starts sobbing, urging me to do so if I wanted. Oddly, I was totally aware of the fact he wouldn't be coming back from the hospital, where he used to go a couple of times a week for treatment, and did not feel the need to cry, weep, sob, mourn or whatever. In fact, I felt my grandfather was with me at the moment, 
I just hugged my mom and tried my best to cheer her up by saying, don't worry, I'm sure he'll hang around for a while. You may argue I was a child with a totally oblivious idea of death, but having had an accident around that time in which I almost bled myself to death, which ended up saving my life by allowing the doctors to detect my type 1 diabetes, on which I quickly became pretty well versed, having read my first encyclopedia by the age of five. I was quite calm and had another level of understanding about such themes. I knew my grandfather was there and from then on would follow and protect me as a sort of guardian angel. I remember the old man used to love fishing. Sometimes we got up real early on weekends and went fishing at the beach for the fun of it. A week after he died, I had this dream of an ideal lake. Your typical Eden, surrounded by a lush forest and wildlife. We, my grandpa and I, were sitting in a boat, fishing rods in hand, silent and smiling, enjoying the calm weather, listening to the waves caress the shore. The faint buzzing of insects roaming by, and the occasional squirrel or deer showing up. As time went by inside my dream, Dark clouds started to show up on the horizon, engulfing colour out of the forest itself. Everything turned dark and withered into a lifeless and rotting parody of the lively picture that surrounded us. Trees, plants, the fish, the water, all life forms were consumed, almost as if torched from their very inside. I remember I was calm, though I can't recall how somebody would be calm with such visions of death just making their way around me. The eyes of my grandfather turned into a blazing star, which I'll never forget. He opened his mouth in a furious roar, and then just vanished. We never said a word, but I knew this was his farewell. Days later, my mother was looking at some pictures of the old man, and amidst them, I found one of the places I had seen in my dreams. She tells me it used to be a ranch she owned way back before I was born, when she was very young. I had never been there, not even as a baby, but I described it in great detail to her. She just burst into tears and hugged me. Some years later, I was like 16 or 17 and lived at my grandma's. I had a very peculiar dream. I was relaxing and pretty much doing nothing besides one of your typical old classic muscle cars in the streets in front of my grandma's. Nearby, resting on the car's back bumper, was a rectangular thing which I can only describe as the frame of a mirror. Out of nowhere, a very sick-looking, water-like surface appears in the mirror. Think of it as the effect of the paintings in Super Mario 64, but with enhanced water caustics. A single drop of liquid blasts out of the waves on the surface, and floats until it's about a foot away from me. Then, a blinding flash of light spans from the drop, and my grandfather appears in front of me. He looked just as I remembered him, an aged man, half bald with a very serene look, his body tanned and more skinny than athletic. However, he seems to be full of life in a way I can't explain. It's like knowing somewhere inside someone's eyes there's a child waiting to burst into hyperactivity with a sugar rush. He dusted off his clothing and greeted me in a way I felt I was more like a friend of his rather than his relative. Of course by now I knew my jaw was open and I was being severely mindfucked in a dream. But nonetheless, I kept my composure and greeted him, asking how he was, telling him how much I missed him and all that jazz. He asked how everybody was, said he was watching me and was proud of me, that I was doing well and taking care of my sisters and my mother. We chatted about the last years, and I couldn't resist the temptation to ask him where he was, and how stuff was going, wherever he was. He says, and I remember vividly, he said that place was like an infinite, pristinely white corridor filled with doors. No matter which door you choose, when you opened it, you could do whatever you wanted, with whoever you wanted, and whenever you wanted. I remember he described how he was having a great time horse riding, taking care of cattle, and spending days playing domino and smoking cigars with his friends. Activities, I recall, were his greatest pleasures in life. There were no limits to what you choose, imagined, or wanted to do. I was amazed by his description, but decided not to ask further. At some point, he said he had to go back, because he had been granted permission to visit us for the night, and his time was about to finish. 
Once again, he sent his regards to the family in two specific messages. To my mother, he recommended checking herself at the doctor. To my grandma, he told her she could sell the ranch. Times were hard, but he prohibited her from selling the house. He had built it and would stay in his family forever. No questioning. As soon as he finished, he waved away and threw himself into the liquid mirror, back into wherever he came from. I saw myself turning around and feeling a breeze in the dream, just as I woke up. When I woke up, I remembered everything perfectly and pieced all this in my mind as a rather creative and intriguing experience. I was shaving early in the morning when my grandma came around and I decided to tell her everything about the dream. To me, it meant nothing, but when I finished, I turned around and saw her face distorted into a mix of shock and disbelief. I was more surprised about her expression and asked what was wrong. Nothing, she said. It's just that today it is death's 10th anniversary. I also delivered the message to my mother. She was confused at first, but guess what? The medical check found a tumour, which fortunately was detected so early on, it could be extracted without any risk. She was scared when they first told her, but pulled through and is perfectly healthy now. I swear I don't know what to think about this. It's been a couple more odd experiences, which I will tell another time. But for the time being, I trust that somewhere out there, my guardian angel is enjoying a cigar, watching, proud of his first grandchild, me.